Support for this podcast comes from the Phil Smith Center for Free Enterprise at the FAU College of Business. The Phil Smith Center for Free Enterprise supports the vision and strategic plan of the College of Business to advance thought leadership in business. The center supports chaired professorships and research, educational programs for faculty members and students, distinguished visiting faculty, along with a lecture series and other educational programs focused on the principles of free enterprise and how those principles affect growth and prosperity. Learn more at business.fau.edu forward slash Phil Smith. Hello, my name is Dan Gropper, and I have the pleasure of serving as the Dean of the College of Business here at Florida Atlantic University. And one of the great pleasures of being the Dean is to prove the hiring of great new faculty that add to the capability and expertise in our group of, of outstanding faculty that are already here at Florida Atlantic University. And today, we're happy to welcome Mosen Emadakiev to our Department of Information Technology and Operations Management. And Mosin comes to us, recently finished his PhD at the University of Connecticut. I probably haven't pronounced his name exactly right, but welcome Mosin, we're glad to have you here. Thank you, Dean Grapper, for having me here. Well, I should say I'm honored to become a member of uh, FAU community. And of course, I'm looking forward to the years to come. Great. And Mosin is one of our new faculty members that adds a great deal in our area of emphasis on business analytics and applications of artificial intelligence and statistical techniques to understanding big data here in the College of Business. He brings a background in engineering and then a PhD in business administration operations management to our faculty, so we're very glad to have him here. What I'd like to do first is talk to him a little bit about his research interests. I understand that you have research interest in logistics and supply chain management, as well as business analytics. And uh, you've also done some work in market design on auction design and procurement kinds of processes. So let's talk a little bit about the papers you currently have under review. Tell us a little bit about what you're currently working on. Sure, thank you. So maybe I can just give you a high level view of my research first. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, my research focuses on applications of operation research and uh, data, data analytics and machine learning into solving complex business problems. And in my PhD, I mainly focuses on, focused on uh, transportation and logistics problems. So let me tell you a little bit about uh, one of my papers that is currently under review. And uh, it's about basically applying analytics and optimization techniques in order to solve carrier collaboration problems to bring pro problem to bring multiple transportation companies together so that they can improve their operations. So in th this research is basically motivated by the fact that significant portions of the miles traveled by the trucks in the US are empty miles. And this is about more than 20%. So reducing these miles is of course beneficial. It can be uh, economically beneficial and also environmental and social beneficial. So in this specific research, I've worked on uh, applying spatial analytics techniques on GPS data in order to learn frequent movements of certain trucks of uh, certain companies in order to, for example, if in order to identify whether in which areas these trucks are uh, frequently traveling empty or loaded. And in that case, I can bring the data of these two companies together in order to solve a, a complex uh, optimization problems and make uh, basically backhaul collaboration decisions. Yeah, that's extremely important to efficient operation. And I guess it's really come to uh, a particular focus in the last few months with this COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic when so many people are ordering things and you not only have the bigger logistics problems of trains and large trucks moving quantities of goods uh, around from distribution hubs, but you also have that so-called last mile issue where you're trying to get them from the distribution hubs into stores or stores into people's homes. And all of us now see 
these Amazon trucks and UPS and, and postal service trucks all delivering packages at a much larger uh, rate than they did before. So that's a, a consumer application, but of course there are other bigger industrial applications as well. So yeah. it's interesting stuff that you're working on there. Yeah. So I see you have a paper that said something like uh, designing a sustainable backhaul framework using telematic sensor data and analytics. Okay. So the backhaul framework, is this sort of the return of goods? Shipping, uh, is that what that? Yeah, maybe, maybe I can actually explain it in a simpler words. So trucks for me are like taxi drivers. If you're a taxi driver, you are picking up a customer or, or passengers and dropping it in another location. And then you need to look for another customers. In between, you need to basically move, uh, travel empty. And that's actually where I'm focusing on. So by back on, I mean uh, an empty trip. I'm, I want to design a system, and I talked about it a little, that I want to design a system that can uh, identify these opportunities among multiple companies. So if I'm traveling frequently empty between multi, in between two areas, I may actually route my truck a little bit pick up and deliver the load of another truck from another company and then continue to my destination. So in total, the, the miles are, the empty miles are reduced and also the collection of the total miles traveled by these multiple companies are also reduced. Very good. So this is an area actually where the business school and the engineering school get very close to each other. On the business side, we're usually looking at logistics and operations management. And uh, in the engineering side, it's industrial engineering, and they're also looking at logistics. Uh, so it's, it's one of those areas where things get, get uh, uh, very close to each other and overlap in some cases. Now, I understand you also have done some of this uh, work, and you did an internship with a financial services firm. And so tell us what you can uh, about that, about applying these sort of uh, analytics techniques and what you were doing in that internship. So, yes, of course. So, my uh, internship actually was just uh, happened very suddenly. But what I was fortunate to be able to actually join Fidelity during the, the summer 2019, there I uh, worked on developing and building machine learning algorithms that can incorporate domain knowledge into predictions. Let me explain it a little more about it. So, often predictive models basically are focusing on reducing a certain loss function. I don't want to go very technical into the details of that, yeah. but their objective are not in incorporating any domain knowledge into predictive, uh, in the, into the prediction of, uh, in, into the predictions, basically. So in that research, I work, uh, and if I want to give you an example, you may want to predict someone who is going to default on a loan or not. And the predictive models comes and say that, yes, a person who may, have generally high financial metrics can uh, is actually um, predicted as someone who's going to uh, default on a loan, and this is the this is this could happen because the math behind it actually made made it make it possible. So in this in, in the work that I did in Fidelity, I worked on incorporating domain knowledge and as uh, side constraints side constraints into the predictions and in order and improve the interpret practical interpretability of these. Uh, machine learning algorithms. Yeah, so I, one of the, I wasn't too technical on that, but yeah. Uh, well, one of the things I, I would just say is earlier this week, I talked to a couple of freshman uh, orientation classes, introduction to business. And one of the points uh, that I made with them is that they need to think about acquiring skills while they're in college, that you should learn things, great books and, and all of that. But a big part of what we need is to acquire skills so that our students can get good jobs and get started on very good careers. And, and that these analytical skills are widely applicable and I think you make the point quite nicely. If you're strong in those business analytics techniques, you can apply them across a variety of areas. And whether it's shipping and logistics and optimizing supply chains, uh, or whether it's trying to examine the stock market and look at price movements or optimal portfolio theory, there are a lot of applications of good analytics uh, frameworks. And having done that for many years or several years in a consulting firm myself, I could understand how if you can do good statistical analysis, if you can write it up and explain it clearly to a client, then uh, you can make a good living. So we're glad you're here to help add uh, those kinds of skills in the area you've, you've uh, 
you've talked about. Uh, and I would also say we have some outstanding finance faculty. They're doing some very interesting things. And as you meet more people within Florida Atlantic University and our College of Business, you'll have a chance, I think, to work across uh, departmental lines and, and really help uh, a variety of of areas. So that's good. Now, do I also understand that uh, you've done some Six Sigma work and uh, an optimization? Uh, it was, yes, actually, when, uh, when I was in Sweden, uh, it was a while back ago before joining my uh, PhD. Uh, I did a three months, uh, four months internship in a company called Exova Metec. It was a calibration company. And there we were working, we did a Six Sigma project to basically improve the on-time deliveries of the orders to the customers. Those are those were business customers. And uh, that's great that you brought it up because it, working in that company helped me to publish my first Financial Times paper in, during my PhD because I got a business problem from them. I got the data from them and I could basically work on their uh, designing their internal transportation networks uh, network and which uh, eventually actually helped me to publish my first paper. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's one of the one of the things uh, in the business school. We do have the applications of, of theory and principles to practical problems in many cases. And so it's great for me as a dean. What I have seen is people who have good work experience, who understand those applications of those problems and take the research and then move it in the classroom are particularly effective. And so that's I think that's a great thing. Now, let's talk a little bit about your teaching interests and what you've been able to teach thus far. So, uh, I understand you've taught some courses in operations management already. Have that yes, experience in your correct. doctoral yes. program? Yes, that's correct. Yeah, it was an operations management, introduction to operations management course. And I'm lucky that I'm also teaching the fir- uh, in the beginning of my uh, teaching in uh, Florida Atlantic. I'm also teaching operations management course. So that certainly helped me a lot. Yeah. Okay, and very also, good. In addition to that, I uh, last semester in UConn, I uh, also taught a business information systems course as well. Okay, great. And then you've done some guest lecturing in machine learning courses as well. Yes. Uh, so that's that's excellent. So we're really pleased to, to have you here, having that experience in teaching as well as a good start on your research record uh, is a great start on your career as an assistant professor. So uh, that's great. You're also proficient in a couple of different programming languages, it looks like. Is, is that right? That's tell, us a, yes. tell us a little bit about those. So, yes, of course, uh, when you do research, you need, and especially quantitative research, you need to know a programming la- language. I started with C++. I realized that it is getting this old school and maybe more recently during the last year, especially actually I joined Fidelity, I started working with Python and I realized it's always oh, much more flexible. Of course, it depends on what areas, what research problem I'm working on. If it's more quantitative, it's more computational, C++ is my, is my choice. But nowadays, if you're working with data, if you're working with uh, basically, even if you are working with companies, it's easier to work with Python. So I highly recommend my students also to, even I've started to actually mentor another student at UConn and also try to emphasize to him that learn Python before anything else. (laughs) Good advice. Good advice. Yeah. Back in uh, when I was uh, conducting a lot of research, I did mostly things in SPSS and SAS and uh, then a few things in in, in Minitab and and other things. So it's a uh, it's it's fascinating how statistics works. But anytime you really understand what the fundamental statistical models are that you're using, then you have a good foundation to move forward. And some of the newer things, the the newer ways of scraping data off of websites and and all that is uh, stuff that we're glad to hire people like you who are up to speed on how to do those sorts of things and how to analyze uh, that latest data that companies are looking at. Uh, so that's great. Let me ask you uh, just a, a final question. It's like you started your career as a student in Iran and then you studied in Sweden and then at University of Connecticut. That's, that's quite a worldly path to follow to get here. Tell us a little bit of what led you to Sweden. <laughs> to be honest, a scholarship, if I want to be honest about that. But That's of course, right. that was my goal first. Uh, no, just uh, just putting the kidding aside. 
So I wanted to experience living and of course studying in uh, uh, maybe certain countries that are focusing on innovation. And it was a completely different experience of, for example, doing a master in Iran. The focus was, was in my master's was more on uh, applications, which I would say very well prepared me for uh, starting my PhD. It helped me a lot to publishing papers and the problems that I worked during my PhD. So yes, actually, I would say it was a good university in shipping and I appreciate them. <laughs> yeah, they're they're a very fine university and uh, and and well known. And then from there, you went to University of Connecticut, yes. and I assume there they held had some financial aid for PhD students. But were <laughs> there correct, yeah. were, were there particular? That was the main goal. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's a it's a particularly well known. Uh, I think in this information systems and operations management area. So uh, we've had uh, folks from UConn before. I've known. A uh, number of faculty there, so it's a great place, and we're glad to have you uh, here join us. So, welcome to South Florida. Uh, we're you. glad to have you with us and uh, join our faculty, and we look forward to uh, seeing you soon. Thank you very much. To learn more about the FAU College of Business, please visit business.fau.edu. Dean Gropper presents as part of the FAU College of Business Podcast Network. To learn more, visit us at business.fau.edu forward slash podcasts and follow Dean Gropper on Twitter at FAU Business Dean.